Hey guys, I'm Hop. Thanks for tuning in to TFB TV. I've reviewed a lot of cheap handguns on this channel. I've talked about Glocks a lot on this channel. I'm at the range today with arguably the cheapest, Glockiest pistol I've ever gotten my hands on. This is the new optics ready version of the Stoger STR9C. Let's take a closer look at it. Turkey's firearms industry is bafflingly prolific. From lowly hunting shotguns to lofty subguns, it seems like they make everything. And the secret to their success is that Turkey doesn't really design anything. The Stoger STR9 series is basically a Turkish-made Glock. When you take it apart, it's immediately obvious. There's a Glock recoil system, a Glock trigger, all the Glock parts are in there. It's also one of the most consistently affordable pistols you can find. As of this writing, I'm regularly seeing the STR9C non-optics ready version on sale for about 230 bucks. The optics ready version isn't that cheap yet, but given time I'd ballpark a sub $300 retail price. The STR9 full size and subcompact are reasonable analogs for a Glock 17 and a Glock 26 respectively, but the STR9C has a standard magazine capacity of 13 rounds, making it smaller than a Glock 19 and larger than a Glock 26. This slightly under midsize package is underappreciated, I think. Whoa, it doesn't want that 13th round to go in. It might seem like the traditional double stack compact is obsolescent now that one and three quarter stack micros are flooding the market, but there's no doubt that the bigger guns are way easier to shoot. If you want to crunch the numbers and maximize rounds carried in a small footprint, you should be looking elsewhere, James Reeves. Taurus, GX4, Mossberg MC2, SC, SIG, P365, Springfield Hellcat, the new IWI Masada Slim, the market is overflowing with high capacity micro pistols. But if you're willing to trade a bit of size and efficiency for performance, these bigger guns still have some appeal. This is the optics-ready version of the STR9C. One advantage to these larger pistols is that they accept larger red dots, which are typically a little bit better. The new STR9C Optics Ready uses a very typical arrangement of interchangeable adapter plates to mount almost any pattern of micro red dot on the market. The plates are included in the box and the pistol ships with an additional cover plate held on by two flathead screws for some reason, which I am completely unable to remove. First shots, Stoger STR9C Optics Ready. I'm not actually using an optic on this for two reasons. One, probably not a lot to be learned from that experience. Uh, this uses optics adapter plates instead of being direct milled. So between that and the uh, short standard height sights, we already know we're not gonna get any co-witness. We don't need to put a red dot on there to figure that out. Second, I can't actually get the uh, slide cover plate off. This thing is held in place with two flathead screws and uh, I broke a flathead bit trying to get those screws out. They just uh, don't want to come out. So we're back in the uh, irons mode here. There we go, got our 50 yard steel, which is a little optimistic. open sights. Nice block style trigger. Oh yeah. Wow. That is actually a really superb shooter. That trigger is just like a super well worn in Glock trigger. Aside from the goofed up optics cover plate, this gun feels excellent. Turkish made handguns are usually pretty cheap, but they're not just some pot metal Saturday night specials. The fit and finish of the STR9 punches well above its price bracket. The grip has a sharp and aggressive texture and a slight suggestion of a finger groove, but not enough to alienate any non-standard hand sizes. The grip shape and sharp backstrap texture makes the STR9C very stable under recoil. I've also been shooting a lot of snappy micro pistols that are about as big around as a straight razor, so a normal sized gun like this handles like a dream. Almost makes you wonder why we ever stopped carrying these. The back strap on the SDR9C can be swapped out for different sizes. My review sample didn't include them for some reason, but I didn't have an issue reaching the controls with the default size. The slide has forward and rear slide serrations, which have a cool scallop look to them, and they also work incredibly well. The gun has good, clean, high visibility metal white dot sights, which are fast and combat accurate. Out of the box, the trigger already feels like a well broken in Gen 3 Glock trigger. I know some people don't like Glock triggers, but those people are wrong and stupid and can't shoot worth a damn, so we ignore them as a matter of policy. 
Another advantage to the larger compact pistols of yesteryear is the ease of mounting weapon lights. The SDR-9C has a three-slot 1913 rail on the dust cover. It's plenty of room to comfortably fit a Streamlight TLR-7 or a larger light like a TLR-1 with a little bit of overhang. Although none of the rail keys included with the TLR-1 are a proper fit for the SDR-9C in particular. This all seems outrageously good for the price so far, but there are two catches, or maybe one and a half catches, depending on how you count them. The first is holster availability. The best carry gun in the world without a good holster is just a paperweight. I shopped around for SDR-9C holsters a bit, and there were not a lot of options out there. Finding one that would accommodate an optic and a weapon light is a tall order. The only real option may be a universal holster that indexes off of the light itself. Filster makes an inside the waistband version of the floodlight that can take almost any gun that can mount certain weapon lights like a TLR-1 or an X300. That's a big holster to carry a small gun in. It's workable but not appealing. The other catch is value. The SDR-9C is a very good gun at a very good price, but that price is achieved via a few shortcuts. The pistol only includes one magazine in the box. I don't want to have to chase down a spare immediately after getting the pistol. Mags are also an expensive accessory for most guns. If you factor in the 35 bucks or so to buy a spare magazine for the STR9C, the cost of the gun is now more in line with, say, the Taurus G3C Toro, which comes with three magazines. The STR9C also doesn't have co-witness sights to go along with that optics cut. Too many manufacturers are shipping optics-ready guns with the same low-profile sights as their non-optics-ready models. I think these things need a little bit more time in the oven. The low-profile three-dot sights on the SDR-9C are great, but if I'm expecting to put an optic on there, I want taller sights, and I don't care if they have dots on them anymore. It cannot really cost you any more to substitute a set of metal three-dots for a set of taller, blacked-out metal sights. And if it does cost more, it's worth it. So ultimately, the SDR-9C gets a kind of half-assed recommendation from me. If I was looking for an optics-ready pistol, I don't think I'd go with this one. For a non-optics-ready pistol, the standard SDR-9C is very compelling if you can find the right holster. But I don't think this version made the leap to red dot compatibility very gracefully. Thanks for watching, guys. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We are also directly supported by our viewers via Subscribestar and Utreon. Links to both of those are in the video description. If you join up, you'll be eligible for cool giveaways that James puts together. I think you can still support us on Patreon if you want. However, Patreon doesn't let us have any fun, so I would recommend you switch over to Subscribestar or Utreon. See you next time. God. That is hard. And that is not.